Hey everyone, I'm Nikun Jagwanshi. I work in the Interactive Media Group, and I'm gonna tell you a bit about Project Triton, which is about sound propagation in virtual reality games and augmented reality. So the roots of this project actually go back to my grad school days, and uh, I worked in a group that was all about physical simulation in UNC Chapel Hill, and I got interested in audio because it seems like a very cool problem to work on at the time. And one of the attractions for me to come to MSR back like a decade ago was we have Xbox and I used to think, well, I used to dream that this sort of thing, if this would be a great fit and if it could be used in games one day, and now it's actually shipping in games. So it, it's sort of a thing that makes MSR very special that you can do this sort of research product transition over here. So the purpose of this technology is stated simply is to make sounds respect the 3D environment. Like we have great lighting technology in games. You can move the sun wherever you want and things look like they should. We have all this cool technology. This project is about making sound do something similar. And the applications are pretty broad. I mentioned games, but there's mixed reality, of course, where um, the spatial audio sense is important to complement visuals. And then there's architectural design. More and more when you're building spaces these days, you worry about how is this going to sound. Uh, once it's built. The research problem is that 3D acoustic simulation is extremely expensive. If you try to do this on a computer in real time, uh, it's off by at least a factor of a million. So doing what we're doing and hoping that machines will get fast doesn't really cut it for this. So our solution was that we have to cheat. Somebody gives us a scene, we take it on a compute cluster, we do all the analysis we want to do on it, and then we already know the results that we would have computed in real time. So all that remains is to just apply the effects in real time. So let me just show you some examples. So this is an example from Gears of War 4. Um, So if you thought nothing happened, that's a good thing. So what this demo is trying to show you is the loudness on that rain is varying naturally. As you walk through the scene, you have a broken roof, the rain gets louder. You are enclosed in some space, the rain gets lower in volume. Before Triton, what had to be done for this is an audio designer would have to go in and say, ah, the roof is broken here, I need to bring this volume up by this amount in that location, and by the time the person walks to that location, I have some logical trigger that lowers the volume, and so on and so forth. And you can imagine, this was a little section of a scene. These scenes are square kilometers. Nobody can go and do that in detail everywhere. So designers had to say, okay, like, we hope for the best, I have this much time, let me do the best I can. With this now, the job of the audio designer shifts to physics will do its thing first, that's my baseline, and then when I want to uh, do my art is on top of that, right? So we're taking the grunt work out of it and letting them focus their time on the things that matter for games. Here's another example. This one is showing uh, there's only one source, some uh, water drops, and it's showing you you're inside a cave and how the sound's reverberation and loudness is changing as you walk around. So as you get further away from the raindrops, the sound gets more echoey, like you'd expect. Then you're walking around the wall, and the sound just drops in loudness. Now this scene already represents a problem with simple techniques. Like one of the standard techniques is, you take the line of the straight line distance from the source and listener and say, as that increases, the sound should become fainter. That's distance attenuation. But at the end of this video, you're actually really close to the source in a line of sight sense. But what you want is the waves to wrap around that wall and to capture those effects to get the right sort of loudness. Again, these things are pretty mundane for us, right? But when you try to model them in 3D scenes, they actually turn out to be really complex. So internally, just to give you a flavor of this, this is what's going on inside. 
So I'm showing you a top view, like a slice through a 3D volumetric simulation. So what Triton does is when you give it a 3D scene, it will place lots of these probes. Think of standing inside the scene and clapping, right? That's an impulse. And then it models how this impulse propagates through the scene. So you can see these wave fronts go around all these obstructions in its way to get to point A. That's diffraction. That's what makes sound simulation different from light and difficult. And if you put two microphones at point A and B, you'd get two different signals on the right. So those signals that you get from an impulse are, is called an impulse response. And the point being that the acoustics at point A and point B are really different. They, those two spots will sound very different. And this impulse response captures that fact. It captures how the scene modified the sound as it went from the source to the listener inside the cathedral or outside that uh, space. And the, to give you a flavor of the idea, it is don't store all this information. That's petabytes of information. We can't keep that around. So what we do is we look at these impulse responses and we build algorithms saying, what would the ear extract out of this? There's a whole amount of literature on psychoacoustics. And we're taking lessons from that and saying, OK, what are the important aspects of these impulse responses that we should keep? And then we, you throw out the details that you won't, hopefully can't listen to. So that's it for me. That gives you an idea. And those are the two links for the research behind this. You can also find papers there. And then also the product that ships with this technology. That's the second link here. Thank you.